miles. Well, I thought I'd have to wait all day to find you two together. What happened? Did you miss your plane? I didn't have to wait that long, did I? You were over here first thing in the morning, weren't you, Chief? Now, wait a minute. Nicole and I planned this meeting last night. We're going to tour the police facilities, do some videotape. <laughs> tour the facilities. That's a cute way of putting it. That's very cute. Miles, what's the matter with you? You're disappointed, aren't you? You're disappointed that I missed my plane? Spoiled your rendezvous? Oh, wait a minute, Miles. I know what you're getting at it, and it sounds stupid. Why this isn't a rendezvous. Just leave, Derek. I'm not feeling terribly responsible this morning, and I, I, I don't want to start off the day by assaulting the chief of police. That wouldn't be too wise, would it? I'm not leaving unless your wife asks me to. Derek, please, go. Listen, I'll call you later about the program, okay? That's all right, Derek. Please go. My wife will call you later about the program, okay? Sure, everything will be all right. You know, I hate to leave you here with... What, with her husband? Miles, cool down. You've worked yourself into this state for no reason at all. Miles, for heaven's sake, how could you say that to him? How could you say that about me? Is it obvious? I was not out of the house five minutes before you had your new lover over here. My lover? Are you crazy? Honey, you must have heard us talking about this field trip last night. I don't need to... Listen to your damn whispers. I knew what you were up, up to before I heard anything. Without hearing it, that's why, <laughs> that's why I pretended there was that field trip out of town. That you were overjoyed, both you and, and Derek, alone at last. Stop it! Made one tiny mistake. Should have given you a little more time. Should have given you an extra couple of minutes so you could have both gotten upstairs. No, no, you're probably much happier down here, weren't you? So you wouldn't disturb the little kid. Oh, wait a second. Just wait a second. I've got more to tell you. Listen, I have to take the barrel down and it to me. You let go of me, please! Sorry, she's still in that meeting. Are you sure you don't want to leave a message? No, I don't know exactly when the meeting will be over, but it should be soon. Yes, I will. Oh, boy, what a day. One thing another. There you are. Well, I don't have to make this one out, what? which makes the second call you have missed this morning from Elliot. Don't worry about it, darling. I intend to miss the third, fourth, fifth, and all the rest of them. You sounded very anxious to talk to you. <laughs> darling, the word is not anxious. The word is frantic. He simply can't bring himself to believe that I meant what I said, that I was not going to divorce him. I don't believe it either. Well, look at it this way, darling. I'm merely honoring my marriage vows, you know, till death do us part. And we're an absolute island of stability in the midst of all these crumbling marriages all around. <laughs> and besides, I'm getting the satisfaction of preventing Elliot from hurting that other woman. Oh, come off that one, Margo. <laughs> <sighs> all right. All right, if you will pour me a cup of tea, I will admit that my motives are not all that noble. But the action is satisfying. Well, all it appears to me is that you are still saddled with being Mrs. Elliot Dorn. I intend to take care of that too, darling, in due time. I mean, as soon as I'm sure the wedding plans are off, I uh, intend to call my lawyer and have him do the proper thing. Margo, do you honestly believe that this thing between Nola and Elliot is going to end simply because he cannot get a divorce? Oh, of course it will, darling. I'm sure of it. Well, you don't think he's desperately in love with that woman, do you? No, I don't. All right, then. As soon as he realizes he can't officially get his hands on her money and her property, then he'll call the whole thing off. She will be dropped like the proverbial hot potato. I'm sure that's him again. 
Well, just tell him that I am in conference for the next six months. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Hello. Oh, thank you, Straper. Oh. Hi, honey. Oh, hi, baby. Look, um, something's come up, hon, and I've got to go out of town on some business. Out of town where? <sighs> New York. Anna got me a seat on the 11 o'clock plane, so I don't have too much time to talk to you. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. You, you just can't run off like that. <laughs> Any choice. I've already scheduled one business meeting for this afternoon. I, actually, I've got two meetings. The first one's not business, but it's just as important to me. Well, who's it with? April, I got a letter from David Henson's widow. His sister? Well, what did she say? She said that she, she knows what her husband did to me, and that she wants to talk to me about it, to try to explain it. Maybe the man made a deathbed confession. I don't know. Wait, I... Wait a minute, Draper. I, I, don't, I don't understand why this whole thing is so important to you. I have to go, April. I said I have client business, and this, this way I, I have a chance to kill two birds with one stone. Or one ticket, anyway. Well, Draper, Draper, listen. Um, remember this morning I told you about the dream I had last night, about your, about your just taking off and leaving town. Don't you understand? You're making my dream come true? I told you that you, you were dreaming about Miles. You weren't dreaming about me. Look, I'm not going to go to New York overnight. I'll, I'll be back as soon as I can. Eight, nine o'clock at the latest. I still wish you wouldn't go. Hey, what's, what's going on? I mean, all morning, Mike's been talking me out of this trip. Now you're giving me a hard time. Don't you people realize that this woman... Knows something about what happened? About why Henson was so determined to keep me from getting that job in New York? Determined to forget about this whole thing. And it's going to be a lot easier to forget once I know the truth. And this is my chance to find it. Uh, honey, honey, try to understand, please. I'll call you from New York if I can. But if I don't, please don't worry. I'll, I'll be back in time for a late dinner. And just think of all the interesting table conversation we'll have tonight. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sounds like your husband's going someplace. Uh, yeah. He, uh, has got a meeting out of town. It says uh, he should be back by tonight. Why do you find it so upsetting, darling? Uh, I, I, um, Margot, maybe we can talk about it a little later. I, uh, I have to go get the law. Dr. Colbert, okay. hospital to order the x-rays. Uh, also ask Dr. Corwin to take a look at her. She's in good hands. Just relax. Uh, he's supposed to call back here, so I'm going to have to follow you to the right, let's hospital. Let's get right, okay. right. Careful about what they're going through the door. Okay. Watch your head. Slowly. Slowly. Start making now. Hello? Miles, is that you? What are you doing home? I thought you had already left for Center City this morning. No, I I missed my plane, so I came back here. April, I can't talk. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to talk to you. I, I want to talk to Nicole. See, uh, I just found out Draper's got to go out of town tonight. And, well, I might be alone. And I thought, well, maybe Nicole could have dinner. But then again, if you're home, then she's not going to be alone. April, there's been an accident. Nicole uh, tripped on the stairs and fell, and, and she hit her head. They just took her to the hospital in the ambulance. Oh, is it serious? I don't know. She's not conscious. I, I've asked the best man in Monticello to take a look at her, but he's supposed to call me back. That's why I can't stay on the phone. All right, all right Miles, look, I'm, I'm heading over to the hospital right away. I'll, I'll meet you there. Miles, I heard the emergency report on my car radio. What happened? This is not a police matter, Derek. I called an ambulance. I didn't call the cops. I came back because I was concerned. Nicole tripped and fell on the stairs, and she cut her head, and, uh, and probably has got a concussion. A few minutes ago, when I just left here, you were in a pretty foul mood, Doctor. What is that, an accusation? No, it's an observation. Are you implying that what happened here is not an accident? Well, you're just going to have to wait till she regains consciousness and ask her. She'll tell you the whole thing. Will she? You'll probably be the first one she wants to see, as a matter of fact. Damn it, Miles, what's the matter with you? Have you gone out of your mind? Bursting in here like a jealous husband out of a comic opera, accusing Nicole of something she... Yes, well, we're both probably making too many accusations this morning. Maybe we just should cool it. Maybe you should go back to your warm little office down at headquarters and just take care of things there and let me handle things here in my own house. 
There's something very strange about the way you're handling things, Miles. And if I had the jurisdiction, you'd be seeing the police. Well, you right don't now. have the jurisdiction, do you? Where'd they send her? Monticello General? How come you didn't go along with the ambulance? We well, have a child in the house, you remember? Housekeeper didn't get here. I'm trying to get a hold of her. What is this? A bottle fell off the. There was no bottle up here. This bottle came from. Damn it! Just get out of here! And one more thing. Stay away from her. Anything I can do for you in New York, Mike? Sounds like you've got enough to do, Draper. Right. I called Mrs. Henson. She said to call her from the airport. She'll see me as soon as she can. What time is your meeting with Stein Associates? Uh, four o'clock. Don't worry, I'll make it. Plenty of time. Uh, Mike, uh, thanks a lot for trying to understand how I feel about this. Draper? Yeah. I hope that you'll be uh, understanding when you talk to Mrs. Henson. Of course I will, Mike. Yes, Anna. Oh, um, of course. Hi, darling. You'll never guess where I am. I gather that means you're not at the office waiting to have lunch with me. Uh, I wish I was. Unfortunately, the story I'm covering down on South Adams has taken up a lot more time than I expected, Mike. You know, frankly, I, I doubt if it's going to be found as a crime anyway. It wasn't a kidnapping? Well, I suspect that the kidnapped child is with his father whose uh, estranged wife is trying to get back at him. But anyway, darling, it's a long way around saying that I'm in a phone booth on the corner of Wilkins and South Adams, and I don't think I'll be able to get uptown in time for a lunch date. I'll wait for you. We can have lunch a bit later. Oh, incidentally, uh, it, it looks like all our efforts to save Draper from learning the truth about Margot will be wasted. He's heading for New York right now to talk to Mrs. Henson, which means that by this evening, he'll know the truth anyway. to use the phone, Mike, if any Hayes. Now you can talk to me, Mrs. Carr. I've been waiting to talk to you alone, lady, you know? Who would have guessed you would have come all the way downtown just to see me? I'm here on huh? business for the newspaper. What are you doing here? Me? I live here, around the corner. My old man owns the flower shop there, you know. Only I'm running it now, see, because he's got a bad leg and he doesn't get out much. Yeah, I know all about that bad leg. It was a gunshot, wasn't it? You know, I couldn't believe when I saw you get out of the car and come into this phone booth, you know? I mean, uh, you're not easy to miss, lady, you know that? You're a very attractive woman, you know? Uh, Benny, look, don't, don't uh, make me late, all right, because you're already in enough trouble as it yeah, is. Yeah, well, that's what I want to talk to you about, is my trouble see. Everything was fine, you know, uh, even though I was under indictment. Those possession wraps, they don't mean a thing. Look, I know that you think I told the police about the $500 that you took from me. I didn't take nothing from you. I gave you a hot news item for that money. You gave me lies. Yeah, and you ran to the police, huh? Even though you told me you'd, uh, what'd you say, protect your source? Huh? Boy, that was some lie, I huh? did protect oh, you, Benny. I didn't tell any... I didn't tell anybody about you. You just remembered something, huh? Huh? You told your husband, huh? The big guy at Terry's place. Yeah, yeah. You let him, you let him blow the whistle, and then you'd get off looking like you didn't do a thing, little Miss Innocent. Let me out of here! You lied to me, lady, and you're gonna pay for it, big. Uh, all right, what do you want? What I want is for you to tell them that you gave me the money for the story I gave you, right? Right? And to, just to make sure it's all straight, we're going to put it in writing. Huh? All right. OK. Yeah. I'll tell them what happened and why it happened. Just get me out of no, here. No, no, no. You're going to write it now, and I'm going to read it, and then you're going to sign it. We can do it right in that diner over there, OK? Yeah. And if you're a good little girl, Mrs. Carl, I'll buy you a hamburger. And don't make me have to hurt you.
April. It's a light concussion, but she'll be fine. What about the bandage? It's all right. It's just a few stitches. <laughs> you probably won't even have a scar. Dr. Corwin is better with a needle and thread than a French couturier. Is it a bad cut? No, not really. It's close to the hairline, so her hair will cover it up. What happened? You'll have to ask your friend. I'll see you later. Thank you. What happened? It was an accident, April. It was just a stupid accident. It wasn't his fault. Whose fault? Is Miles with you? Um, uh, no, he's not. I'm, I'm sure he's on his way. Are you sure? I want to see him. He must be feeling awful. Why? Cole, what happened? I, I spoke to Miles. He said he missed his plane. No. He never intended to go anywhere. It was just a trick. He wanted to trick me. Trick you why? Derek Mallory came over to the house. It was just for business. He came because we we're going to go to the police academy. Yeah. Miles came in. Like a madman. Like a madman? What? He accused me of. Listen, I can't even say it. It's unbelievable. He, I love him so much. How could he even think it's that? It's okay. It's okay. April, he's really sick. Oh, Mrs. Goodman, I, I did tell Nicole that I would call you and ask you to come over this morning. It just slipped my mind. A lot of things have slipped my mind lately. Oh, I really feel lousy about it, Doc. Now you tell me Mrs. C is in the hospital? It's all right. I just spoke to the doctor in charge of her case, and he says she's going to be fine, just fine. Yeah, but you want to get over there, don't you? Look, I'll get a cab in two minutes. I'll be there right away. I really appreciate that, Mrs. Goodman. Oh, look, Doc, you people are like my family. You know that. And look, as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to go over to see the missus at the hospital. Thank you, Mrs. Goodman. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> still here? Oh yes, still here. Enjoying myself. You have no idea how much fun I'm having, Miles. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, well, just take a look of you, at yourself. You look perfectly dreadful. You've got blood all over your shirt. Miles, you can't go out like that, you know. No, I can't. Get out of my way. No. No, I really can't let you go up there, Miles. Really, it's it's for your own good. Honestly, you you wouldn't like what you saw. Get out Miles. of my way! Get out of my mind! stay here. If I stay here, I know I'll hurt her. I know I will. 